British YouTube, back again, still on chapter three. This is chapter three, part two. Uh, we left off at whatever I could do to increase our happiness, I wanted to do. Okay. Tyrone wrote my son Brian and daughter Chrissy as well. Mainly he introduced himself in an attempt to get them to accept him as a part of our family. My daughter replied, letting him know she could accept him as a friend and as her mama's friend, but we would not have any of that stepdaddy stuff. They were too close in age for all that. With Brian, Tyrone had a further agenda. He wanted to talk to Brian about living the life. I told Tyrone and Brian that if he, being my son, proceeded on the road he was on, his path would surely lead to self-destruction. I was deeply concerned about my son being the next black man swallowed whole by the beast. Tyrone reached out to Brian, but he said and wrote that he didn't want to hear shit Tyrone had to say. My youngest, Don, my youngest son, Dante, was merely concerned about whether or not he would get to change his last name <laughs> and his first if I would allow it. I began looking online for ways to marry an inmate in Texas and learned Proxy could do it. That is when Tyrone gives notarized consent for a designated person to stand in and say his vows in his absence. Initially, I thought burying a man who is in prison is unconventional. Some will say it is downright stupid. Even so, Tyrone gave me something many people spend their entire life looking for and never find. He gave me unconditional love even if it was in our words and imaginations. Yes, our circumstances are unconventional, but when you truly love someone and when you want to spend the rest of your life with them, nothing else matters. Moreover, not altering my present lifestyle was a plus. I knew my family and friends and church would be against my relationship and upcoming marriage. For the most part, I did not discuss it. With those I am close to, I could not help but talk about him. He was my world. I thought and talked about him all the time. Chrissy said this situation was why the divorce rate was so high. My mother called me stupid and said I was raised better than that. She hurt me when she said that, but I know she loves me and only wants the best for me. I assured her I was not marrying Tyrone just to have his last name. My heart skipped a beat whenever I heard or talked about him, and I would not deny it. My brother said if anything jumped off, especially as far as Chrissy was concerned, he was putting his foot in my ass. I just looked at him as if he was stupid. He knows our father is deceased, and I do not believe he is turning over in his grave. As time passed, my family mellowed. Oh, glasses. Dang it. I keep forgetting that I can't see good without them. Can't read good without them. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. After time, As time passed, my family mellowed a bit. I clearly let them know that Mary and Tyrone was my choice, and that's it. They know from experience that once my mind is made up, they will not talk me out of it. They did not have to like him, the fact that we were engaged, or be happy or supportive, but they did have to either accept it or discontinue a relationship with me. My children did not have a choice. Even though Brian threatened to take the mail, they would respect me and him as my man. If it ended badly, I would count it all joy and a lesson learned. But more importantly, I told my mom that my baby could not use me more than I allowed. I was not doing anything that made me uncomfortable, and hopefully I would not have any regrets. I have learned that I am better off when I accept the consequences and look for the lesson. Last but not least, if I focus on all things that are pure, lovely, and of good report, I will be fine. However, I began to think about the legal consequences if I was to marry my baby. My main concern was if I would be able, liable for his old credit debt, student loans, or child support, even though I did not know if he had any. I thought about how I would file my income tax. I weighed the pros and cons for Tyrone and myself, which equated security and commitment in the relationship. 
legal rights, and intense mental affection versus not having our financial and sexual needs met. Moreover, the lack of instant gratification was maddening. At times when I would respond to what he was, whatever he was going through, he had already moved on to something else and vice versa. I still look forward to Tyrone's letters. Finally, I got a letter that said all the calls and investigations had come to fruition. Tyrone would hopefully be moved before months end. We looked forward to our first date at his new unit and made plans accordingly. Tyrone said if I was filling him through the mail, he feared for my poor little heart once we met in person. I mean, prison. <laughs> my sister, Carolyn, was curious about the mysterious convict whose letters had her sister captivated, so she, sat, so she decided to join me. She said I treated Tyrone's letters like gold and admitted that because of the proportion of black men incarcerated, there probably were a lot of good black men in prison. My heart was aching, but I still considered spending my life with my Tyrone. I could be a good girl, as he stated, and not cheat on my baby while he was away. He made it plain that he would deal with me getting my sexual needs met. The only thing that he would break his heart is if I allowed another nigga to lay up on me, play me for my money, lie and cheat, thereby breaking my heart. I thought that was admirable. He wrote, The night before I was moved, I'm not going to go on about your wants and desires. I want you to be happy, baby. I trust that you are smart enough to know real love from a lustful desire. You are a big girl and you know right from wrong and true love from game or bullshit. Christine, I am crying to you with all my heart. Please don't allow no man into your heart when your heart, mind, body, and soul is telling you no. You are Tyrone's baby. Can't no nigga love you like me. I'm just unable to perform and be there physically and sexually. I truly believe you can love someone with a tender touch. Too many women believe the lies because the man knows how to work his dick. These same women start to react because they are thinking with their pussies. Baby, both are being played on because of a good feeling for an hour or two if that. Hmm. I will write you the same day that I arrive because I know my baby will be worried to death. And you know I can't have you all stressed out. Brian is doing enough of that already. Hopefully, through your prayers and mine, he will come through. I'll leave you with a little something since I got those pics of your pretty ass feet. My baby ended with a nice fantasy of him and me making love. I felt every word. When I was reading it, I had to catch myself. My mouth kept dropping open as if I were in shock or something. <laughs> That's my baby. P.S. By the time you read this letter, I won't be on this unit no more. Amen. Well, let me tell you I was comforted. I lay in my bed holding my letter and thanking God for moving my baby out of that cesspool of a prison. I hoped his new unit would be better. When I got his letter letting me know he had arrived, I was calmed. He said the unit was live and he was feeling being there. I looked up directions to this new unit to plan my trip. Reading Tyrone's letters and writing him became a crucial point of my existence. However, another letter arrived that once again threw me for a loop. Amongst the I loves yous, this is what he wrote. Listen, I would like to make a request for my birthday. I would like you to bring me a $50 bill in your titty. Baby, I am trying to get on my feet good. I'm on a new unit. I don't know anybody, and the Crips are already asking if I'm down for Cripping. I told them I am a member of Christ, so it is me against the world. I'll explain everything to you on our date. I got a plan as to how we can come up with the 10000 needed for my lawyer. Please don't try to think about what I'm saying and let it drive you crazy, baby. I promise I will perform with your support. Oh, yeah, baby, please don't forget the money for candy. $20 worth of quarters is all we are allowed, but I'm not going to eat all that sweet junk. J 
Just don't forget my birthday present. And tell the kids daddy said hello. As you can probably imagine, I'm tripping once again. Here he is talking about money when I thought I made it perfectly clear to not ask me for shit. Lord, what is wrong with him? He either thinks I'm stupid, is stupid himself, or really is trying to make things better for us as he stated. Whatever the case, it was too much for me. Enclosed with this letter was a poem he had written for me entitled, Loving a Convict. It touched my heart as I read it. He wrote, Loving a convict is not child's play. In fact, it is a high price to pay. It's loving me without nothing to hold. Laying alone with all of your fears. It's like falling asleep, eyes full of tears. Picturing me on a big empty yard, always under the gun held by a guard. It has never and will be easy. It's going to be rough. And loving me as a convict has to be tough. And being the woman you are, your love is so true. And in the end, you will get what is due. It's not forever that you will have to wait. Before you know before you know it, I'll be walking out the gates. It's so unfair, the pain I inflict. I just want to thank you for loving a convict. Love you, your hubby. Now, wasn't that sweet? Nevertheless, he had requested money, and I was not feeling that. Months later, I found out many inmates use this poem in some form. They change a few words and called it their own. When I called Tyrone, my little convict, he got upset. I reminded him that he had just sent me a poem referring to himself as such, and he said, Oh, yeah. In the TDCJ General Information Guide, it states, Limited physical contact between eligible offenders and their visitors may be allowed if the visitors 